So I'm watching the sports card investor video titled, is it time to panic? And this is really crazy, right? Because in the beginning, it seems like he's a reasonable human being. He's saying, oh, the market is down. It's a very scary Halloween. And again, he's re realizing that things are not very good now, which has been very different from the positivity and you know, all people being negative that he was saying. He was like, oh, box breakers are not being able to fill box breaks. There's less interested people there. And it's true, their viewership numbers are way down. I've been watching Backroad Breaks for only two months now and they used to have a ton more viewers and their box breaks used to fill up at the at beyond what they you know wanted it the price to be which is already in, highly inflated but enough people join a box break they lose money you know you pay $800 for a, a repack from Dave and Adams and you get $200 card in it you pay for another 800 you get another $200 card and so on i mean there's only so many times you can do that before you go broke and my opinion of what's happening in the market, and this is something Jeff Wilson will never tell you, sports card investor will never say, people just simply ran out of money and they lost interest. It's a double whammy, right? You can go out, you can walk your dogs, you're gonna to go to Disneyland, you can travel now. There are a million better things to buy than cards, guys. It's called life experiences, right? And again, during COVID, you couldn't really do that. So one company I can, that's fair. Cards remind me of one company, Peloton. Peloton was this company that made biking and the idea was all these gyms would be shut down and you would just hop onto your bike, you would bike, 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 and then there would be a virtual trainer and you would join a virtual class and there was all this high tech and Peloton made a shit ton of money. They were the definition of the darlings of the COVID-19 because when people couldn't go to the gym, just to hop onto your Peloton, you pay a monthly subscription, you pay, Four to five times, like for a two thousand, three thousand uh, dollar vehicle, um, stationary bike, which you can get a same quality vehicle for much less. You pay way more for their special shoes and their, their weights, and I mean, there was all these add-ons that they really got their subscriber based on. And of course, the subscription, the monthly subscription that you had to pay, was quite a bit of money. I forget how much it was, but it was a lot. Or you can just hop on a bike. You know, take your car out in the mountain, take your dogs and have a good day. So like they milked you for like every dollar you had and now people don't want to pay that because they, they realize, oh, you know, I can just ride my bike for free. So we have so many very, very expensive products that are not worth it. Many of Panini's products, many, uh, even we can talk about Magic or even Pokemon, the value of opening a pack, as soon as you open the pack, the, it becomes almost zero. You know, I mean, Pokemon Fusion Strike is a very good example. Even at $2 a pack, which is what I get at loose, it's like a terrible pack to open because like, what am I trying to get? You know, like, and the potential of getting one of the cards I am trying to get is just not there. We live in a society where right now, at this current moment in time, we are in a recession as the numbers state, two quarters of negative GDP. People are very negative. People are being laid off. Peloton, they got they had four layoffs. Imagine surviving four layoffs only to be, you know, be uh, laid off the fifth or sixth or, and you know what's coming. They're laying off every month or every two months. And this is not the only company, right, that's having troubles on the stock market. I mean, if you want to figure out what companies are, just check their stocks and see how much money these guys have lost. Because if the shareholders don't want to continue to fund this idea, they will just sell the stock, even if they lose money. And then that will create a downward spiral of, you know, the, the company losing, quote, valuation on Wall Street. So yeah, uh, C collects cards. C made a video. Uh, Jeff finally made a video, but his video is very different. His video, I think C collects cards is really honest and I would watch her video and I would take her advice on this topic over Jeff's. Jeff is too invested. I mean, his, his own name is sports card investor and he's paid all this money for slap strong or whatever that is, slap protectors, slap stands, He's basically given them a huge valuation, right? 
which I don't think they're worth that much. I can go to Alibaba right now and get it all done for one te- one hundredth of what he's selling it for. Anybody could. Like they actually actually also sl- uh, sell slabs that look like PSA slabs. I mean, if they can make fake PSA slabs, then you have to assume that they still have the slab, for, you know, the slab thing. Uh, as a patent attorney, a lot of patents are being published right now are patent applications. They haven't been called patents yet because they haven't been accepted, but they're patent applications for the dumbest inventions and they're all sports car related. Like as a patent attorney, I look at some of these patents, I'm like, why would anyone patent this? Is there like a market for this? Like why would anyone spend the $20,000 to prosecute a patent application on a dumbass like slab protector? Like this, is this really like innovative? Is this really something that you could sell? Is there, I mean, the, the way I look at it is, is there any competitors who really would want to compete against you who your patent could be used against, i.e. not Alibaba, right? Alibaba just rip you off like crazy. And you can't do nothing because Alibaba's in China. Good luck, you know, you got your patent. Even if you have a patent in China, there's no guarantee that you can persecute any of those people in China in Alibaba making the same product as you maybe even better because that's probably where you make the product too. I mean, imagine a warehouse where they make your product and then after hours they can take, it's a kind of like Nike, right? They use the same material. They use the same, you know, standards, same process. It's the same people. It's exactly the same company. Just at 5 PM, they shut down. They, you know, take your name off their company stand and then they put their own name on it. Good luck. Good luck because you're not going to win any patent. I'm a patent attorney. I've been a patent attorney since 2012, early 2013. Um, but I've been a patent agent for much long, uh, for not much longer, but since 2009. And the one thing I can tell you is, yeah, good luck. You know, man, good luck on that. So I think Jeff is just so invested. You know, he spent so much money on cards and so much money. And he's even talking about double down. That's actually his word. I'm not using, I'm not just saying the word. He's using the word double down and we've got a thousand new subscribers, but he forgets to tell you that new subscribers are at the 999 price point. And he probably overall lost money when the old subscribers transferred to the new price point. I don't know what there is to be positive about if you're an investor. I know that if you are a collector, there's a lot to be positive about. These boxes are on clearance in Walmart now, like they used to be. I would not be surprised. You know, uh, GameStop always had this great sale for uh, Black Friday. It was buy one, get one free packs or bundles or anything. So buy one, get one free of anything. You know, if you buy one, you get something free of the similar type or something, you know, similar price. And they would have this for all Magic products, all Yu-Gi-Oh products, all Pokemon products. It's unbelievable to think about this, right? But that's what it was. You buy a booster pack for $4, then you get the same booster pack for free. So you're basically buying these blisters for $2, which is less than I buy my blisters today for which is 250 or more, depending on what the blister is, right? So they would have all these sales. And in one year, I think they put it online. So I made like a bet. They typically, these sales would not be online. They would be in store only. I think one year they did it for Funkos. And I was like, oh, well, let me buy like a million. And that's why I have like a ton of Funkos because I just one year they did it for Funkos. And I guess they forgot that it should be in store only. But you know, what's in store only, I, I just drive around to the five or seven game stops and just hit them up and just buy, 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 buy. It's such a good, you can't lose. And those sales obviously have not existed during the boon of Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Matt, or sports cards. And they also did sports cards, I think too. I never looked into it. But yeah, now when you go to Walmart, there's a clearance sticker on the newest product of Panini. Cause no one wants it. There's overstock. Uh, a lot of times, you know, what happens is there's some type of delay in printing. So they, I bet you what happened, I, I would assume what happened was they printed, they ordered a lot to print and now only are we seeing it. But that was during like a year. So it's kind of like grading, right? All these base cards are coming back and people are like, why did you grade these cards? They're worthless. They're not even worth the money cost to grade them. 
And the answer was, oh, well, because, you know, at the time, which was a year ago, they were worth the money. A lot has changed over a year. My overall thing is sometimes you're too deep. Sometimes you're, you know, it's like in poker. You're, you're, you're giving an awful bluff. Like there's nothing that you could have which would make sense. But you already have so much money, you know, you're so pot committed. Jeff Wilson is so pot committed to this idea that his brand, his market mover app, I mean, he has multiple employees on payroll. If anyone is suffering right now due to the drop in card prices and card boxes and honest to God and viewership, right? It would be Jeff Wilson. So, you know, he's saying, oh, we make more content every day now. It's because he has to because his numbers are down. It's kind of like the idea of, oh, we have so many more members. We have a thousand new members paying members of market movers. Yeah, because it's nine ninety nine a month. Like they're not paying. I think originally the lowest tier was like twenty four ninety nine or fifty dollars, or it was a lot of money. I remember making a video about it. I just forget what it was. I tried to research it. So somebody leave it in a comment below. What it, did it used to be before it became nine 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 ninety nine? No, nine dollars and ninety nine. So basically ten dollars. I'm mean, gonna use ten dollars a month. Ten dollars a month is reasonable in my opinion the 25 or 50 or whatever the pro was is not so the reason that you got all these new members you might have lost money actually depending on how many old members became obviously they were upgrade upgraded to the ten dollar a month one so he's talking about all oh, making more videos producing more stuff because he's yeah because times are bad man you gotta utilize your team because, I mean, you're they're on payroll for a sports card investment channel. This, like when we talk about Peloton and the employees of Peloton being laid off four times and now, you know, maybe their fifth layoff coming this week. Well, what about this? What about, uh, so imagine a company today and all, we have full-time employees. I don't know how many have, 10, 12 full-time employees. We're paying them anywhere between 50,000 to maybe more, but at least 50,000, I assume. So we have a half a million dollars a year in payroll and we're just doing, we're making an app and we are, you know, lowering prices and we're making more video content and we get less views now because less people are interested. Like, like Jeff even mentioned the box breaking thing. When I first watched Backyard Breaks, they had a ton more viewers. So I never saw any free of, any of their free channels drop below 100 viewers. Now, sometimes they have 50, sometimes they have 70, the two other smaller channels. There were times where I saw backyard breaks of 800, 900, because uh, I watch at nighttime, so that's when I watch. And now, like, you know, and they didn't even do Twitch or YouTube or uh, TikTok or something. Right, they weren't even streaming there. Now they are. Right now, these breaks are not filling because no one is dumb, or and all the dumb people got extinct because they ran out of money. That's the. You know, I'm going to make a video about this. The real core problem is all the dummies ran out of money, and now the only money that remains is from collectors, and the collectors are not idiots. They know what something is worth, and they know oh, this box is not worth it. Bye, guys.